So we've primed all of our components here. Uh, the windshield is actually going to stay black until the end. So this piece is finished. All right, we're one third done. This piece is really just going to be the underside of the vehicle. It's already painted black. When the time comes, we're going to need to paint these hubcaps to match the rest of the truck, but we're not there yet. That'll be a finishing step. And lastly, we have our chassis. And you know, I am a little bit disappointed in the way that the spackle worked with these holes, but at least they're not as glaringly apparent as they were at first. Um, I think what we're going to do, though, to cover it, is we're going to create a tarp, you know, like the kind of tarp that you'd roll up and tie shut or what have you. And you can make those out of all sorts of different things. There are guys that cult them out of green stuff, and there are guys that use other kinds of epoxy putty. We're actually going to go with the cheapest of the cheap, and we're going to use baby wipes. Now, these are the cheapest baby wipes there are, and it's actually better to buy cheaper ones because the more expensive ones often have small images embossed in them, like small teddy bears or flowers or other things. The cheapest ones just have nothing. So what you do is you leave these to completely dry out, which doesn't take all that long, and then you can cut them to size, tie them shut, paint them over with PVA glue and water, and then paint those things. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go give these a cut, and we're going to measure them out. All right, so we have our baby wipes. We have a ruler. We have an X-Acto knife. And we're actually working on a cutting mat right here, which is going to make our lives a lot easier. So we're going to start by taking this, and we're going to align it just on these squares. And these are one-inch squares, so that makes it pretty convenient. We're going to straighten this out, lay it flat. We'll set this up for two inches. And then being very careful of your fingers. And we now have a two inch wide piece for our tarp. So now we're going to roll it up. And this part, it shouldn't be too challenging. Wish I had smaller fingers. And it's probably better not to have this rolled up too tightly because we are going to tie it shut. And when we do tie it shut, we want to make sure that it kind of poofs out and has wrinkles like you'd expect something like this to have. So we're going to roll our tarp all the way up. And then we're going to leave it nice and flat there on the top. Now the next thing we're going to need to get is some masonry twine. Actually, any small string would probably suffice. So we're going to cut off, oh, I don't know, six or eight inches of that. And we'll tie this in two places. All right, and then we're going to trim the edges of these things. So I think the tool for that is going to be a pair of cuticle scissors. So I'm going to go and fetch those, and we'll be right back. So instead of finding cuticle scissors, I found the next best thing, a uh, fingernail trimmer. So we're just going to cut off the edges of the string so we don't have any stragglers. All right. Looks like a tarp if ever I saw one. However, it's not going to take paint the way that we currently have it. So we're going to get out our trusty old palette. We're going to get a glob of, well, this is tacky glue. It's PVA glue, white glue, whatever you want to call it. And that should be more than enough. And you're going to want to mix that with water. So we're going to get a little bit of water in here. And 
And we're going to get a third old glue brush. Then all you do is paint it. That is just what we needed. So we're going to let this dry, and once it's completely dried, then we're going to glue it on top of there and see how it covers those holes in the cap. Welcome back, everyone. We've made a couple of slight changes since uh, our last clip. After creating our tarp, I put it here and noticed still kind of looks like there should be some sirens or some lights on top of it. It's kind of an awkward place to store, and I'd probably put it up here if I was actually going to put it on the roof. So I decided instead that I would put another layer of spackle on top, which is what we did, and I sanded that smooth. I think that'll look a little bit better. And I also decided I wanted to hide some of these rough metal edges. So on the bottom, where it's very unlikely anyone will see, I spackled this in, leveled it off, and... Um, that I think will paint pretty well and no one will notice any rough edges with the metal there. And on the top, I found a use for our tarps. It's common practice with military vehicles for troops to lash tarps and other items to any convenient point on a vehicle. And here, the tops of these ledges would be such a point. So what we'll do is we're going to glue our tarps right over there. So I suppose we could view this either as troops being able to release it and cover the signs that will be here if necessary, or it could just be a handy place to store a tarp. So I'm going to put those on also. Then we're going to put another coat of our base color on it and see what we have. So now we have successfully placed a base coat on our chassis. And I dare say that uh, if you look closely at the areas that we spackled in, they're really not very visible, so we're pleased with that result. Before we go ahead and shade and dry brush this, however, you may remember this other piece, this chassis, and how it's black and most of it will be invisible. However, if you look closely, you'll see that our hubcaps are still black. So we're obviously going to want to paint them the same color as we spray painted. I suppose you could... Uh, tape off the wheels and try to spray paint it. We're actually just going to use acrylic paint and we're going to mix it till we match it. So in order to accomplish this, we're going to need a base of green. We're going to have to add a little bit of brown. Almost all camo greens have brown in them. And then we're going to have a little bit of cream that we're going to use just to light it up. Now we've also brought in got a little bit of water, have a garbage brush here, have a scrap of cloth that we're going to be able to use to wipe things up. So now we're going to mix this up in a little palette here. So we have this. I'm going to try to match this shade. That, I think, is close enough. So now that we have the color that we're looking for, we're just going to get a slightly smaller brush, and we're just going to paint these off. All right, so while these are drying, we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing to bring out some highlights on the chassis. So this can dry. We're going to get a 
nice healthy scoop of this. Add some cream, which is a really good color for highlighting. And you remember when you dry brush, you soak the edge of the brush, you wipe off as much of the excess as you can onto the towel, and then you lightly drag it across the higher surfaces of your vehicle. So we're just going to go along the very tops of this. Well, we finished up with our dry brushing. You can see here we brought out a lot of the highlights. and I used a couple of different shades. I used a slightly lighter green for details that I really wanted to pick out, like the very edges of the, of the chassis, some of these rivet heads, that sort of thing. And I also did a quick dry brush here on the inside of the wheels. Now I want to bring out the shadows. Customarily you'd bring out the shadows first and then highlight, but I found that especially if I plan on using more than one shade, I'll highlight first then put a layer of shadow in. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Most guys use what they call a wash where you take a darker paint than your base shade, mix it with water so you thin it out, and you can also just paint it across your model. It'll drop down into all the crevices and it'll help make the shadows more pronounced. We're actually going to use an old leftover product that I have here. This is a, a wash from Citadel for green paint. It's sort of a universal dark green wash and we're just going to make use of that. So we're going to paint that across the whole model, give it a chance to dry, and then see what we have. All right, now we're just going to let this shading dry off. That's going to level out a lot of our colors. And then when we add our final varnish coats, the clear coats, that'll even balance out the colors a little bit more. So we're going to be very pleased with what we get. Once it dries, we're going to do a little bit of finish painting. I may just do that off camera and then just show you what I did afterwards because it's kind of boring just to watch somebody paint. And, um, yeah, then we're going to get on from there to varnishing. We've done a couple of processes off camera since our last clip. Uh, you'll see here that we did take some acrylic paint, just the kind that you get, uh, you know, at the art store. And you can see we did a number of things here. You know, we painted and dry brushed the grill and the headlights, you know, these orange uh, directional lights. Same thing here. Took care of the tail lights here in the back. And um, allowed all of that to dry. After which, we sprayed a few coats of gloss varnish and then a few coats of matte varnish, which covers the gloss completely. I do this for all of my wargaming models because as you move and play with these items, you will eventually wear the finish off. And if all you have is a matte varnish, you'll eventually wear your paint off. However, if you do a few coats of gloss followed by a few coats of matte, when the matte varnish wears off, then you'll see some shine coming through, and then you'll know to hit it again with the matte varnish, which is why I do it. The other thing that I did is I took a couple pieces of that plastic card and just made a couple of sample signs, in this case uh, for an ambulance. And I have them marked on the back, left and right. And so um, this is an example. This is the right side of the vehicle. And we can slide that 
right inside of those brackets. And now if I want to, I can use it as an ambulance. Or I can remove the signs, in which case then it is a simple truck. And I might make, you know, uh, explosive ordnance disposal signs or a few other varieties just so that I can make the truck more versatile. That's the key, really, having multiple ways to use it. It makes for a more versatile model. So here we have some before and after photos. You can see the original on the left and our finished piece on the right. And I dare say our finished piece looks a lot more battle ready for Army Men Wargaming. Well, that's all for this. This model is now ready for the tabletop. So um, I guess we'll put this video together and then we'll test it out in a game. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like me to do more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it.